Welcome to the weekly Digital Automated Rig Technologies updates. We're working remotely as I'm sure you are, and we are leveraging the content, the data, and the information that we have to keep our industry up to date with the latest innovations. We'll be focusing on our jointed pipe injector for the next few weeks. We'll be talking about our testing, our results, our challenges, and our own successes. We're happy to have you here for the journey. Thanks for tuning in. Hello, I'm Andrew Richard with Automated Rig Technologies, VP of Sales and Business Development. I'm speaking today with Ron Townsend, the president of Automated Completions Technologies, our US-based entity based out of Houston, Texas. Ron's got over 40 years experience uh, in, in land-based drilling. Uh, Ron, thank you for uh, spending some time today with us. And so, um, first question today, Ron, uh, what is the mission of Automated Completions Technologies? Uh, the mission of Automated Completions Technologies is to bring innovation, uh, innovative solutions, and optimized technologies to the well completions and, and somewhat the drilling industry as well. And, and the primary product around that, that, that automated completions technology is based around is, is the jointed pipe injector, right? Um, That's correct. So, so what does that technology, uh, how does that technology move, move the industry forward? Uh, the, the, the JPI is revolutionary, uh, in many aspects, uh, you know, and as we, as we present this uh, product to the marketplace, we find new things and new, new applications for it every day. But it moves, uh, you know, for, for, the, for the drill out business, which is big in the U.S. marketplace right now, you know, it moves uh, the safety needle in a huge way. Uh, it moves the efficiency as well in a huge way and just completely revolutionizes a, a, a market segment that basically has no technology added to it in, you know, 40, 50 years, which is the completion side of the business. I see. I see. So, um, looking at the completion side right now, uh, that's primarily done by coil and by, and by a snubbing or hydraulic completions unit. Is that correct? Uh, correct. Yes. Or, you know, in some cases, rig assist snubbing units and work over rigs. Okay. Okay. And, um, with the laterals getting deeper and deeper, no doubt coil is starting to, to, to wane and, and, and rig assist and, 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 uh, hydraulic completions units, standalone units are, are, uh, are taking the lead there. Is that, is that correct? Yes, sir. More so the hydraulic uh, hydraulic workover units. Uh, okay. But those are limited in 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 the, in the marketplace. There's just not that many out there, and so uh, we need more. We need we need we need to add more solutions to the market. We need to, in our, my opinion, we need to move away from uh, workover rigs completely in this segment and go completely standalone hydraulic workover. And thus, JPI fits into that mold. Great, great. I see. So, um, the big thing there is going to be the the fact that we're moving from coil, where we can't rotate, uh, where royal, where coil does not rotate. Um, you can't clean out as well, those sorts of things. Is, is that the primary reason the industry has gone to the hydraulic completions units and the depth? Like, are there... What... Yeah, it's more depth-based depth uh, than anything. You know, everybody prefers coal. Coal is easy, uh, you know, and simple, but, you know, coal taps out at about 22,000 feet. And as we know, in the Northeast marketplace, uh, specifically in the U.S. Northeast, that we've been past that number for years, and we're seeing uh, operators limiting their their measured depth and their lateral depth by how far you know what can call service. So call can only service to twenty two thousand feet, let's say. So everything stops there when we should be drilling to uh, 
to drain the reservoir, ever how, ever how far that is. And so with the JPI, we're not limited to uh, the call depth. Uh, we, we, we do a lot. We reduce the cost overall by, by using stick pipe, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot, there's a lot, of, lot, lot of pickups with the, with the JPI. Okay. So what I'm hearing you say then is, is that because you're not hauling the coil around, you're, you're, you're ending up to be a little bit more mobile with the, 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 the hydraulic assist unit, but you also have the clean out, uh, the rotary capability and the depth uh, on the hydraulic completions unit. So then swinging over to the jointed pipe injector, uh, I understand the linchpin technology being the, the gripper block itself that retracts around to the OD of the tubular uh, that is wider than the, than the nominal size. So if we're talking about a two and seven eighths uh, pH six type, type tubing, and there's an upset and the coupling as that, as that gripper block comes over the crest and, um, and, and the leading edge sees something that is, is, is wider than, than the, than the tubing size, it retracts out of the way. So it doesn't scrape, squeeze on that upset or the, or the, or the coupling. Um, so moving the needle there between, uh, hydraulic completions units that, that half the time are going in the wrong direction what sort of responses are you getting from the industry when they realize that the that the tubing is just moving in one direction f for the whole trip in or the whole trip out? Uh, not you know we don't actually we don't see a whole lot of of questions or comments specifically uh, surrounding the one direction they they don't seem to understand how, how much of an impact that has uh, they do want to talk about trip speeds so everybody in the world for the last 40 years always want to talk about trip speeds and so when we get down to, to that conversation and we tell them you know we can trip comfortably at 3,000, 3,500 feet per hour, which blows away coil and, and hydraulic snubbing, then they get real interested in, 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 in talking about the efficiencies of the unit. Yeah. So, but we're yet to prove that, you know, so once we, once we prove the fact that we can go whatever speed, but we're reaching, we're reaching speeds uh, where we have to be careful with swab and surge of the well as well. So, there's a lot more to uh, efficiently cleaning the well bore and efficiently tripping pipe in the well than just how fast can you go. It's a bigger it's a bigger thing than just how fast can you go. Yeah, I I, I understand that. So there's there's a few questions that I've seen that we're getting uh, from the industry about about the speed of the injector. Let's just go into the one component for a, for a minute. Um, you know, we've, we've, we've got the number and you and I've had this discussion before about this, the 7,200 feet per hour trip speed. And then on some of our publications, we're showing 3000 feet per hour trip speed. So um, what's the difference there uh, that, 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 that we've talked about uh, in, in your mind between those two numbers? Well, I mean, we know the bare injector will run run that fast, uh, but uh, you know, we just we don't need to go that fast to be effective. Number one, number two, we we have to deal with pressure in some cases and slow down and equalize pressures and 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 get tool joints through the BOPs. There's a lot. More more to it making connections even though we're getting uh we have to have more relations still but if we can move at 36 3000 whatever number we're still blowing the competition out of the water yeah okay i hear you i hear you so i think it's that comment that you made the other day as well about uh you did just cut out there for a quick second but i'm gonna uh we'll we'll, we'll pick that up but i I think that comment that you made made uh, the other day about driving a Maserati down the the Sam Houston Parkway with it with during rush hour is is sort of that same analogy, right? Like, 
you know, you build the build, build the unit for for the speed, but we don't want to be limited by the jointed pipe injector. We want to be limited by the other constraints in the system. Exactly. Yeah. We'll we'll, we'll drive as fast as we can drive with uh, you know every well is different. Every well profile is different. Every everything about every well is different. Every every operator is different. You know, everybody has a different idea about what fast looks like. Yeah. And so we'll let those things, you know, limit us. But we are, have built this thing. You guys have built this machine to run as fast as the, the, the driver wants to drive it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So moving around the jointed pipe injector, um, talking about mobilization specifically with those three loads that we've got um the, the the center section on a skidded unit um with with the control cab wet pack uh as as one of the packages and then the catwalk sitting up on the skid um what through the process starting from the catwalk uh can you touch on a few of the high level points that, that, that contribute to the speed um, from the conveyor catwalk all the way through? Uh, yeah, the cat, you know, starting with the catwalk, you know, the catwalk is a conveyor type catwalk. We've not seen uh, a catwalk with that design uh, in the industry so far here to date. So, Basically, you double your speed overnight by just going one way. You do not have to come back with a skate or with any sort of cylinders to get the next joint. Next joint, joint, joint. You have you have a you know joint number two is right behind joint number one, five feet away. You don't have to cycle the whole length of the catwalk, especially with these uh, floor heights that we're seeing on the drill outs. You know, we're forty feet floor height. Uh, so it's very, it's very significant that, that, the, that the catwalk can just deliver pipe one right behind the other. And even though we're moving slow, we're moving twice the speed of a normal catwalk or even faster than that. And so it's huge, it's huge factor in uh, the overall efficiency and timing of, of delivering pipe into the well. And then, you know, the fact that the injector can, can run as fast as it wants to, basically, as fast as you want it to. So, basically, uh, we're not waiting on anything. Everything is presented. Everything is ready to go in the, in, the, in, the, in the hole. And so, it just becomes a machine that just flies. So, and you're not in a hurry. You know, there's a difference between speed and hurry. And so we don't want to ever get in a hurry mode, but we do want to be fast and efficient. And this machine is designed with all that from, from its roots. Yeah. I like, I like that speed versus hurry. Could you touch on, on the casing filling tool that, 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 that'll be attached to the power swivel up above? So, uh, Specifically speaking about the power swivel and the tubing circulating tool, which is connected, we've taken from the uh, casing running tool, which has been in, in, in the field for years and years, and uh, we've downsized that to a tubing circulating tool, which allows us to connect the power swivel with the tubing by externally sealing on the joint. So we do not have to screw in to be able to circulate. So that that you know slip over and seal is is, is it adds to the speed of and, and efficiencies of, of of being able to run in the hole and circulate or pull out a hole and circulate uh, and, and and very rapidly you know, un, un, unseat that packer and pull out the tool. So. It's uh, just another another thing where we've we've added that feature, and it just adds to the efficiencies of, of the machine. Great, and and the so that's the that's the power swivel and the um and the and the tubing circulating tool. Um, so because the tubing never stops moving, 
then uh, what we must be doing then is assert tracking those couplings as we go in. That's one of the one of the inherent uh, requirements for the system. So once the once the pipe handler is handed off to to well center and the t- tubing circulating tool has um, has sealed along the top, and we f- we're following uh, the, the string with the uh, the tubing tong making up that connection. Once that connection is val- verified, um, uh, the uh, the injector will speed back up. So I guess I didn't make the point that the injector does slow down two points at two times during during running in the hole. Uh, that is during connections and it's during equalization, so below the injector. Um, I guess we haven't talked about the fact that there's nobody on the floor during this point. Absolutely, you know, 100%. In, in a normal operation where you're just tripping in, uh, no people on the floor, which is a huge safety feature, uh, versus uh, hydraulic completion units where we have two, three guys up there, 40 feet in, in the air with really no means of escape. Uh, so, you know, huge, huge benefit. It runs more like a coil. That's a pickup from the coil side. We're running uh, the whole location, including pump. From a climate control, we access. You know, you never see a company man in a in a snubbing basket, really. Yeah. Uh, so he has no access. He has no input, basically, unless it's via remote. No interface with the operators when they're running those snubbing units. You know, here we can. Uh, we he can he can go down, check on things, talk to the guys whatever, because they're, they're, they're in a completely different environment. So it just adds, adds a little bit more, uh, professionalism, uh, uh, you know, to, to the, uh, to the operation interface with, uh, the guy running the job is always huge for me. So, sir, you know, when you talk about cost savings, uh, in any industry, it, it, it always boils down to head count. And so every guy we can take away puts money in the operator's pocket because they're paying for those people to be out there one way or the other. And so from a cost perspective, you know, we lose the cost of coal if we're, if we're replacing a coal unit, which is huge, a very big number uh, as a commodity cost in that industry is that coal. That coal string is... Uh, six figures and uh, has a very short lifespan so when you're talking about uh rig assist units there's just so many people out there you have people from the from a rig assist company you have the workover crew that's still there even though they're they may be limited to what they can do to help that day or that for that specific uh, event and so you have all this you have all this head count that we can eliminate and uh, you know greatly impact uh, the cost of it and, and when we're in twenty thirty dollar oil or in Canada, I don't know single digit oil maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's I think it's a, it was six bucks the other day. Yeah, so it's huge if we can eliminate people. Yeah. You know, and like you said, every person we take off that location, uh, it's a person we don't have to worry about training. It's a person we don't have to worry about replacing. It's a person we don't have to worry about getting hurt and several other things. So it just, the overall project scope, it just adds so much value. As well as uh, just, just, Tearing down the operation. You don't have as many people to keep up with. And that's the biggest headache for the service service companies today's labor. The next thing removing the people does is you know, I, I had I had a I had a meeting yesterday, virtual meeting, because we're all in our little little uh, confined spaces. But uh, we talked about Years ago, in the in the eighties, we we had this battle going on on the drilling side of the business, where it was used the automatic driller, and the driller who's been drilling for a hundred years, 
he wanted to, you know, have his hand on that crowbar and drill. But we knew, uh, you know, but the industry knew that people behind the automatic drillers knew that the machine could out drill every day, all day long. But to get to that uh, was a huge step for the industry, drilling, drilling industry. Then we added Delta P to the, uh, to the automatic drillers, and we made another leap. And so as far as, as how many feet we could drill in a 12-hour tower, machine versus man. So this injector does the same thing. It takes the people out of the equation, and the machine does the work. And so we become so much more efficient. The process uh, just gets so much more efficient because it doesn't. The machine's not doesn't get cold. It doesn't get hot. We don't need to stop for water breaks in South Texas. We don't need to cool down. Uh, the machine will cool down by itself. It's designed to run in hot climates. It's designed to run in cold climates. And so. We lose all these human factors that we have to deal with, and we just run pipe in the hole, yeah. or pull pipe. In the hole. We get the job done with the machine at at speeds that we never can get get accomplished with with humans. Have any of the clients that you've met with um, realized that there was a something on their wish list that they wanted to be able to? To like some capability or some sort of process that they wanted to be able to run through uh, on a well that they are not able to do previous to, to the jointed pipe injector? Uh, pre well, previously, uh, when, when speaking specifically about a coil tubing operation, which is the preferred method of, of drilling out for everybody, uh, you know, to get production tubing in the ground, you had to, you had to drill out circulate out without 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 rotation with the coil and pull out rig down coil and then and then bring in the workover rig to run production pipe okay and so that time frame depending on timing could be you know a week uh could be a day but it also could be a very long period of time if the rig's not available you've got 2,000 workable rigs in the fleet but anyway scheduling becomes an issue you're probably handing off from department to department at that time internally at the operator's house and so with the JPI you know what I've been encouraging people to do is Get rid of coal, get rid of the work string, and drill these plugs out with your, with, your, with your production string. Make one run, drill out, pump the motor off, leave it at the bottom of the well, pull halfway out of the hole, and, and hang it off and start producing your well. Yeah. And going in that so, yeah. Uh, you talked about stripped time. Uh, uh, talk about trip time. The most trip man ever made was uh, not making the trip at all. So your your trip time gets real fast when you're only tripping out half a string, and and then go straight into production. So the impact on trip time just quadrupled. You know, multiplied times ever what number you want to use. And so anyway. Uh, not tripping, not having to trip, not having to wait on the work already, not hold down, nipple up BOPs or whatever that, whatever, all that goes away. That goes in the trash pile. And yeah. so we just, the whole overall process becomes very efficient when you have a machine and you can, you can do this uh, kind of stuff with it just. And so people are a little reluctant. I had a huge meeting yesterday. I had a, dozen uh, people from the operator or so uh, on the line with, as well with the service provider. We had that conversation and they were like, yeah, we, we can see that, you know, we need to change. In the industry with $30 oil, $20 oil in the U.S., you know, it's screaming, you better get efficient or you're going to be out of business. And so they're listening, they're listening uh, now when sometimes before $100 all you can get away with a lot of stuff right yeah and so they're they're you know they need a they need a machine 
changes the way business operates. And this JPI machine does that. All right, Ron, thank you very much for the conversation and all answering all of our questions. Uh, stay safe down in Houston. And uh, we will we will talk to you soon.